My name is Jay Rock. I've been cutting for almost, I think, going on nine years now. Two, three, four years professionally. Um, started cutting in my backyard. Like everybody else, got the same statistics and story and shit. Cutting their backyard. And after that, it was broke. I had to get some money, so I paid. Uh, I paid attention to it back going to college and shit like that. So I got super clientele college. So that's really my, really my that's really where my clientele came from. Is college. Um, then I was busting up to cut up some celebs like. Metro Boom and Future, um, Cubs at one point in time. Um, shit, it's a lot. It's a it's, it's it's a long list. I just forgot half of them and shit. But I also cut from my homie Zona, man. Shout out to Zona Free Band. Um, yeah, been blessed, man. I just been cutting for a while. We at Christian Field, style by. Um, it's real dope. You know, two floors, restaurant right here. Um, it's in the hood, but we ain't we don't act like the hood. You come in here, it's real elegant, it's real exquisite. You come here, you might get you a bite to eat if you come on the right day. Coming on Tuesday, ain't nobody gonna be in this bitch. Shit. I started cutting hair started cutting in 1999, hair. my freshman year of high school. Fucking up haircuts. I was charging motherfuckers $5 for haircut, $3 for line. Right. As I started noticing my skill was getting better and better, and I was starting to get in high demand, I went up to 10 bucks. You know what I'm saying? And that shit, it, it just, it took off like a rocket. Yeah, I went up to 10 bucks, and I was charging niggas $5 for haircuts, $3 for line. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a struggle. It was a struggle. You know what I'm saying? Like when I first started, you know what I'm saying? Eddie was like one of my first motherfuckers that came and gave me a shot. I, was, I had a few clients, but he's one of the first motherfuckers that came. Actually, he sent me a lot. Of, he sent me a lot of clientele. I can't, I can't even really lie about that. He a fucking headache though, but he a good nigga though too. Well, my name is AJ. I go by AJ the Barber. Shop name Top Shop Chicago. I opened it in 2012. Prior to 2012, I've been cutting hair. I started cutting hair in 2007, so I've been cutting hair for 12 years now, consistently, daily. I was always into it ever since I was a kid. I used to love going to the barber shop to get my hair cut. It was like a no longer. It was like a two week. Every two weeks, I was getting my hair cut consistently. As a kid, I'm like instead of me going to the barber shop paying for a lineup in between weeks, I grabbed some liners, line myself up. And uh, th that started when I was like 13. So like, I used to just, I was at my boy's house. He had some liners. I used to always just line my own hair up in between cuts. And I started lining my boys up and I got good at it. And uh, so it was something I always thought I considered doing. All the people that I'm getting all these new clients from January to now, I done probably gained about 20 new clients, right? All of them got the same fucking story. My barber be making me wait three hours after my for, uh, for my appointment. He ain't never there. He leave to go smoke weed. He leave to go shopping. He leave to go fuck a bitch. All that shit. I don't do none of that shit. I'm gonna do all that shit when I get off work. I think the key in this field is just to be consistent, man. Like I see some barbers, they got they cut hair good, but they work ethic ain't good. You know, they don't show up to work on time. They always got excuses. Like, we all can make excuses, you know what I'm saying? I'm tired, you know what I'm saying? I was tired before we started to shoot, but I keep my word for whatever, whatever I'm gonna do, you know what I mean? And, uh, <clears throat> you're just consistent, man. The clientele is gonna, is gonna be there. I think somebody who got a better work ethic is not that good of a barber. It's better than a barber who can cut hair good and don't got a good work ethic. You know what I mean? Personally, honestly, we got a better work ethic, gonna make more money. And the clients know they can rely on him. Even if he's not giving the best haircuts. If you got a client and you late for that client, the client not gonna come back nine times out of ten. Not, he's not gonna tell you. You see, he's either not gonna show up. But if you keep doing that consistently, you're not standing on your ground, okay, I'm gonna be here at 10 a.m. And nigga here at 945, and you ain't even here yet. And that's really what happens. Cause they clients, some some loyal clients, you might become the biggest client. Yo, I need this cut at six o'clock. You get there at 6.30, my bad. They don't want to hear that. Oh, my bad, woo, woo, this and that. Okay, this is the first time I hear that, but if, if this shit consistently, you have to cut it off some type of way because in that person's head and, 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 or, or that employee or whatever that is, they want to have a perfect day. Their day might be fucked up, but you're going to fuck it up even more coming late. We find more problems with our people. Business. Because we we in we can go in that's how we go in like that's that's fucked up that we but that's what we have to say another issue with black black we got more of a problem with it if a black person white person do it it's like we get them on the pedestal 
real talk. Mentally, we don't even notice. That's real talk. See, the issue with black that's, businesses, that's we all know. The issue with black, a lot of some of these black businesses, though, we always look for a discount. And that oh, don't mean that's another black topic. don't mean oh, discount. I can't I wait to see touch that. On that topic. Black don't mean black, discount. Black, you oh, what? You looking for a discount? If I go to a motherfucking dealership, I'm looking for a discount. Period. Motherfucking niggas is looking for a discount regardless exactly. of what race it is. Period. So for you to say that is a vague ass motherfucking uh, uh, example. Exactly. Okay, now we say how we, no, how we, no, hold on, no, let me no. finish, let me finish. And how we view we black, and how we view black, how we view black people, and how we view black barbers, because that's just who, the, just who we patron with. The thing about black businesses is like, we still to the fact that we got a lot of homies that help us out. Cause when we start a business, we, we, who we start out with? Family and friends. So once you get those family and friends, it's, uh, it's other levels of black businesses. When you get those friends, they be so comfortable that they wanna, they wanna get something free. They wanna get hoodies and whatever for free. You know what I'm saying? So they get so comfortable at that type of state. They like, every time, whatever you doing, I need the shit right now, bro. What's up, man? I'm finna pull up. You be sleep. What? What you talking about? I sell hoodies. I'm trying to get me a hoodie, bro. I'm asleep. I can't, I can't do it right now. I'm gonna get you at you later. Man, I'm trying to get it for free. What? You can't do that. Cause the thing is, with people that start a business, they don't know the, they never stay a business first. They just wanna see somebody over here. Okay, bet he got a hella shirts. He going crazy. I'm finna do the same thing. I'm finna follow that lane. But they ain't never sat down and really read the book on business, really read the book on how to manage money, liabilities and assets. They never learned the shit. So they just go straight in and sell shirts for, under undercut they sell five dollars, ten dollars. Is when once people do that shit and do that shit for a while, it's gonna be comfortable to the to the to the to the um to the mass of people. It's me as a barber, if I if I if I got a, if I got a huge clientele, and I know I'd be tired. I can't cut twenty people in one day, and I'd be like, I'm just being me. I'm just being cool. I just cut all y'all on the same day. Me me physically and, and on some health shit, I can't do that. Hey bro, man, I, I ain't got no bread. I can't I can't cut you. Why? What you mean why? I, mean, I gotta pay bills, I gotta pay a booth rent, I got shit, I got a whole crib. Or I got a child, I got stuff, I got I gotta do. Y'all understand, I don't work a nine to five, I work from client to client. So if you fucking around with my clientele and I'm trying to get you in, you ain't got no bread. I'm gonna look like an ass, so I'm just doing another favor for somebody. So that's what black businesses fail, because we all we do so many favors, but they ain't they ain't receiving the favor back. That's just one. Two shit. <laughs> I'm going in two. It's just that. But they gotta understand it's a business. Uh, meaning like, this is how I get paid. This is how I make a living. This is how I want to go out just like you want to go out. Same way you want to travel, I want to travel. So if I'm giving my services away for free or a lower amount, you know, the way I look at it is a lot of people, especially dudes, you know what I'm saying? They, they, uh, they willing to spend two, three hundred bucks on shoes or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But they complain about a forty dollar haircut, you know what I'm saying? It's just like it's forty bucks. But honestly, like some of my clients, we so cool. I wouldn't mind cutting the hair for free. But what am I getting? My getting? haircut for free? Yeah, right. Every now Sunday. Every Sunday. I just make sure I close every Sunday. See? There we so go. I cut his hair for free. A lot of barbers is going up now. They they getting their apps. They getting up. They they charging forty, fifty, and up. Because now the barber supplies done went up. You know what I'm saying? Now the owners is going up on booth rents and shit because the cost of living has went up. They got these new <laughs> clippers now. Strong, that all that shit done went up. The cost you know what I'm saying? Living. Then you got all that, that that motherfucking mental stress. One thing is too, man, how long barbers been charging that price? $20, 25 They been charging that shit since 1990. Shit done went up. Snickers ain't the same. Chips ain't the same. Ain't shit the same price no more. Gas didn't even fucking went up. Listen, 25 for my son's a little steep. Now this motherfucker gets brand new shoes every fucking week. Every fucking week. So now look, a lot of niggas that be complaining about the price, they priorities all fucked up. You wanna know why? Cause niggas put three fives before they haircut. I am a Three fives is what, $40? I am a pawn. Niggas she smoke that shit in one day. I am. Niggas are, are paid $100 for a meal that they finna shit out in an hour. Or this shit right here, $40 a fifth. You finna piss out in the hour, but that's worth more than your haircut? Fuck out of here. I'm so pay, my gotta get a will pay all that money to do some shit that they finna blow within an hour. We, hey, we we all know that. We know that. But, so, that, hold up. but that's so, the now, reason look, why I've never, never complained hold about look, it. Now look, now shit. Now $25 for a kid? Some motherfuckers out here charging 30, 40, 50 for kids. You wanna know why? Shit. Cause they don't because sit still. They don't sit still. They, 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 they take up a lot of time in this barber game. It's about time. Mm -hmm. That's where your money gonna come in at. I don't be late all the time, but sometimes I be late. But when my client late, he 
text me back to back. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Okay, bet. Where you at? It's 11 on 5, put me at 11. It's cool. I don't give a fuck about five minutes, 10 minutes, but you like 25 minutes later, I'm like, that got other people waiting on me. They look at me. They give me the side. Like, they look at me dangerously, like, nigga, what, what's up? Like, I, I didn't even get in an argument doing that shit, just trying to put it in my other client, because he like a other client himself. So, time punctually, I need that. I need that so I can go through the day as well as you want to go through the day, because you don't know what I'm going through. You know what I'm saying? Because I got hell of everybody else that's in the shop, man. You just coming late. When I was in college, I was charging five dollars a cut. Okay, after that year, it I was charging ten dollars. After that year, I was charging fifteen. After that year, I was charging twenty. It's four years. I graduated four and four and a half, so probably five, probably nine. But I don't, I don't give a fuck. About that. I graduated. So coming, coming to that lane and coming to a corp, not even a corporate, just a a career field of just in my in my creativity. I have to charge up. Cause guess what? You have to pay where you, you have to pay where you cut it. So if the booth rent 150, 200 a week, and you charging $25, you're not even breaking even no more. So you actually doing motherfuckers a favor. You just cutting to pay the to pay the booth at the end of the week. Pricing has to go up. Especially if you got a career. You know what I'm saying? Especially let me say this. If you got a large following on social media, I can say this. If you got a large following on social media and you charging $20, dollars $20 a head. Initially, them people gonna come to you because you gotta you, you cutting nice, but you undercutting yourself because you working, you actually you doing more labor other than you working smart. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I, I charge thirty, but niggas always tell me, man, you need to charge fifty, you need to charge this, you need to charge that. I would do that, but I have I have a lot of clientele that can't afford that, or they can't afford it, but they just don't want to. But that this guy that there's people from the neighborhood that they don't, they don't have them people don't, that don't have that type of money. Or it's people that's from the neighborhood, they come with their parents, come with kids and shit. I just got 15. So I, I'm always I'm always humble to the fact I could get them out the way. But charge up. If, if, you're, if, if you're getting cuts like this, goddamn look good. This ain't even it. I ain't even done yet. I ain't no shave on that. But my for Australian Puerto Rican home. You see how it is? If the cut's looking like this and there's no pushback, charge $40. What's the point? Because you're going to put everybody on being just like this the same way. So I say pricing will change your life because you could do more stuff. You have a lot of money. I'm sorry. Your mind could be together, but if you price up to your worth, you would be good. There's no, no it ever undercut yourself. What I realized when I did go up on prices, there were people that said about time. There were people that didn't say anything. And there were people that complained. But as the way I look at it from my perspective is that there's only a certain amount of people I could cut in one day anyway. So, when I was charging a cheaper price, I mean, it was like, it was really draining because I'm cutting more people. You know, some, some people got mad when I went up. They disappeared for a while, and then they went somewhere else, and when I didn't get pushed back, <laughs> had a three weeks recovery, <laughs> asked me how I come fix it. <laughs> Only thing you can fix a pushback line in this real time. So, give it two weeks, and then they back in a rotation. And then they appreciate your price and they understand why you're charging what you're charging. R. Kelly. I'm just calling the nigga Robert Kelly. Because we all know he a legend when it comes to the music. The stuff he did, I don't agree with. Because the shit is like preposterous. But I know it happened way back then, but when a nigga do something like that, and fake brag on it, and the shit come back around 360. I can't, I, I can't even save him. I can't even say like free him or whatever the case may be, because the shit is, is wild. But you know, karma always come back on you, like for for strength. You don't give a fuck if it's a year, a day. I remember I stole the honey bun from the, <laughs> from the gas station. <laughs> I stole the honey bun from the gas station. My parents was out of town. I stole the honey bun from the gas station. Went back around the corner. Went to the crib. I couldn't get in the crib, so I stayed in my people's crib for like a week. My other people's crib. That's just karma. It's, it just comes back on you. So, the people came out with a whole documentary on him. And that shit blew up. If that shit never happened, he would never be in this predicament. But girls and ladies and people that have been through this type of trauma way back then, they feel they feel that they want to be an advocate. So, once they did that shit, hey, it's gonna come back on you for strength. So it's like, I can't even say I'm sorry for him, but hey, he is a Chicagoan. You know what I'm saying? We gonna represent our people, but that shit was hey. Yeah, you gotta do better than that, man. Now you're talking about child support. You know how the you know how the world is, man. They did Bill Cosby the same way. It's been 80 years later. Now he wanna get like that on him because something happened way back then. It's 
It's a cycle. It's explanatory. If you guys are, if the people, if the people or the watchers or whoever's viewing this, if y'all conscious enough, you know we, the world is not set up for black people. You know what I'm saying? So anything that happened to black people, any guy certain, a certain type of a statue of power, they gonna get us. They gonna get us. He didn't do it. Lies. If you're not charged, if you if you found uh, innocent, that means you didn't do it. Lies. Y'all. I mean, what? You got daughters. Yes. So it was grown ass men having sex with your fourteen year old daughter, but he didn't get convicted. He ain't do it. Okay, but me being a grown ass no, man. No, ask the question. Yeah. You ain't got done with someone with 14 years old. No, that's how I feel. Everybody who defended him, that's because they've been grown Okay, but his parents say he did. Old. His parents, her parents say they did. And then, and the, and the, and the uh, 14 year old say he did. The question I, I mean, that's ask it. you it's is, all. if a man, a 50 year old man had sex with your 14 year old daughter, but he didn't get convicted, did he do it or no? No. Oh, you lying. If I say she, he didn't do it, and my daughter says he didn't do it, he didn't do it. My take on it is, like, just cause a person, I, I don't think like people is, is pedophiles because they like say that these girls is waiting now to come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, who knows if these motherfuckers paid off or any motherfucking thing to I'm even say that they shit. was paid off, but he, you, you have sex but, but, with a Fourteen-year-old girl. But Toya, you what did. facts do they got though? Like you seen the same proof? video I seen. All I seen was the tape of him pissing on the motherfucker. <laughs> hey, but check it out though. If she said he didn't do it, and the parents say he didn't do it, because they was paid off. So of regardless, what is consent? Right. It's but when it all when it all when it all when it all boils down, it's every consent. every even though if he if the kids say that he didn't do it, the parents say it, one person say it. He but did. but the quest the problem is you keep saying that they got paid off. Everybody got paid. I say, so I so if you gonna if you gonna accuse R. Kelly, I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna be devil's advocate. If you're gonna accuse R. Kelly, every grown person in that room need to go right down with R. Kelly. He, they should, so why the but parents that's not ain't the going question. down. Every, they should. Everybody they should. should go down. There's I'm no reason there, there's is. there's no reason for everybody to be granted immunity for uh, for allowing the shit to go on. He been paying your bills for all this time. Now all of a sudden the money has run dry. Now all everybody want to come out because Lifetime giving y'all a check. He okay. still did it though. But, all that's factual. He still has sex with an underage girl. Okay, but, but, but it's fucking rape, rape is hey, rape. Hey, hey, what, what are they doing with Catholic priests? They moving they 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 to different yeah, covenants. Yeah, yeah. They're they moving to different too. covenants. Yeah, yeah. But they're not. It ain't the same energy with blacks and whites. But is sucking really fucking? What? Is eating somebody <laughs> ass really? What you know that he, he you named this in the toilet. You throwing this in the toilet. <laughs> this is, you don't care nothing about this. He's your so asshole. No. You throwing this in the toilet. <laughs> so you care nothing about this. He eating your ass. It's really give me oh, 30 shit. years. Oh, Cause I'm eating some shit that you're gonna dispose oh, anyway. God, I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's right, but just think about it. Though. I mean, but but even but even as even as a parent and a father, oh, even, even as a parent, that's what I'm saying. even as a parent as a father of daughters, there's no way in the hell I'm not going to know one where's my child. You lying. You lying. I did a gang of shit. My mama had no idea because I told her I was somewhere else. So you lying. But, but that's never, understandable. Never but but, some, but, but, if you, but if you but if you looked at that documentary, some of those girls were saying that my parents knew where I was. My parents was calling the studio to talk to me. But then these are the same chicks that's going on Lifetime. You, if your parents knew where you were, you knew the difference between the parents wrong too. Yes, yeah, but yeah, that's what we're saying. Raise the hell about these parents, though. Well, <laughs> man, yeah, I know he did it, man. R. Kelly, come on, man. They when they came out with the Boondocks episode, I don't know. This is probably like ten years ago. I thought it was all fun and games when that came out. But history is repeating itself, and I think with social media, you know, once something get a buzz and people start paying attention. It's not just on him, it's on all of us to hold people accountable. And I think he's got a problem, I think it's obvious. But he had help. Dude is not that smart to be able to make all this stuff go away. So I think that the, the results, I mean, was done in the dark and come to the light. And it, it's sad that it had to come to this, but I don't think about him. I think about the victims that are out there. Now these tapes came out, they said between 1998 and 2010. Why do you think they just doing this now in 2019? Money. If you pay people off and they sign non-disclosure agreements, 
I mean, that doesn't make it right. And I don't think that R. Kelly is the only person that's done stuff like this. It just so happens that he's now in the spotlight and he's going to have to face the nation. But it wasn't just on him. There are other people that allow something like that to go down. I shoot out Texas. But I don't know how you doing, birthday, hey, happy birthday, shit like that. Is that cool? I don't say nothing, but I think I can. I would expect mommy and baby mama to say happy birthday. Like, I think, like, that would be pretty fucking childish if she did it. Like, right. Like, That's cool. Like, I'm not going to wish the nigga happy birthday. Like, but as far as sending gifts for the birthday, like, that's not really her position no more. Like, right. Texas. But. I don't know how you doing, birthday, hey, happy birthday, shit like you that. Is that cool? Cash out? I don't say nothing, but I right, think, I, I think. I had text, like, I would expect mommy and baby mama to say happy birthday. Like, I think, like, that would be pretty fucking childish if she did it. Like, right. like that's cool. Like, I'm not going to wish the nigga happy birthday, like, but as far as sending gifts for the birthday, like, that's not really her position no more, like. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So they, yeah. Well, I, I understand I was, I was Father's Day gift because, like, this is the father of your child. Like, I will let it slide. But, like, a birthday gift, that don't really make sense. Some you people what? some people cut you off at your life forever. Like, I can, like, right, right, like, with my ex. And I'm with that too. That's fucked up. But my ex, like, I just I just shot a birthday text. Probably like the picture. She blocked me off everything. Damn. Damn. Everything. <laughs> I swear to God, I texted her the other day. I was like, man, how you been? She, who was this? I'm like, this Damn. Jasper. After that, my shit was green. I'm like, hold on, I'm gonna text again just, just because. But I'm not, but I, I talk to her every blue moon. I'm just being cool. But she had a man though. So I think that's why she's just like, no, nah, I can't have this nigga come back in no type of way. So she just blocked it off. So I just, that's tough. weird. That's tough. Like that's that. weird. I'm just being a friend. You know how it is. I don't know. No, that's I just crazy. That's um, sometimes you gotta block it. Goddamn. I'm trying to be a friend in my case. Yeah. Maybe she can't be your friend. Though. Probably so. <laughs> <laughs> and she has the right. So that is, it's bogus <laughs> ass baby mamas. Oh, you got a new bitch. Oh, no, you can't see the shorty. This, yeah, but that's this bitch did my daughter do. hair. No, well, you can't see it now. <laughs> that's when a bitch bogus. Like, you know what you know what but if you don't play your part of the, uh, exactly. if, you if you don't play up to your part of what you're supposed to do, she child support, child uh, 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 a parent conference, a parent teacher conference, and you faking out, or my son was waiting for you to go here and there, and he waiting at the window, and you never came, and you never came. So of course, I have the right to be like, no, nah, nigga. Now nah, I agree. I agree yeah. with Eddie on that. You know what I'm saying? That's understandable. And I've That's understandable. But you got a lot of guys that's out here that's trying. But the first thing these women, everybody always got a solution. But it's a levels of trying. We, we need we you, it's no levels. no they are they, levels of trying. They, they, they famous they famous their famous line is you can go to court you can go do Yo, this why should I have to why, you got if I had to if, if I and then I come over and my shorty is bogus I'm trying you know I ain't got no job but you got Jordan's on and you got a fresh lineup but my and my son I'm over here bogus without no lineup but who and fought no it? but well, who fought is that if you the daddy. If I, but no it's the not dad. the daddy's fault if I give you child support it's not the daddy's fault it's what the it's the, what the mama do with the yeah, money that's not because real. if I that's get real. if I'm Come getting on, if, I'm, if, I'm, wait, wait, if, if I'm if I'm if I'm getting if I'm getting my child every two weeks or every week or whenever whenever I, I get shit. my child and I and I come over here say hey you know what I went shopping I went about my kids some shoes and then and then I go I come over there my kid got on some busted shoes come on now be for real as the parent, so, so you said yeah. basically, right. you basically right. said right. when you cut, pay your cut. child support, you don't want to spend no more money. No, cut. I'm not. No, 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 no. I never, That's I never said, once, I never I, once. I want to put you in the world. I, I never, done. I never once <laughs> said that if you pay, <laughs> I never once, I never once said if you pay child support, you shouldn't do anything else. My my point is, if I'm paying child support, don't sit back and say, well, your money is not good enough. At the end of the day, I still have to live as well. So. Just because we decided we decided to have this baby together, yes, we should have stayed together under these under these no. different under these different circumstances. We're not together, no. but you can't sit back and say I should I should have I should live my life and have to take care of myself. I, I still got to pay bills, nigga. Because when you go because, to the barbershop, take your son to the barbershop. Listen, I, I, I take my son to the barbershop. Look, I'm not saying you can't. I wouldn't buy my kids some. But, but, ain't not, but ain't a lot. But, but guess but, what? And not your defense, right? And not your defense. Now I done, I done dealt with all type of you know I cut hair. We didn't have fathers that tried to get their sons up in here 
to get their hair cut. That's different. But the mama's still on goofy shit, that's though. That's different. You know what I'm saying? Well, now, different. I'm not totally against women. But we don't know exactly Women and what men be on bullshit when it comes to these kids. You know what I'm saying? My problem be when motherfuckers get the finger point. When me always doing this and man, women they always doing that, man. People always doing some shit. It's all it's all about your shorty. But right. but, Listen, but no no hey, no, no, no. Hey, but oh, oh it's some Listen. women, it's some women out here. If I went out there and bought my child some light ups, we don't want this motherfucking uh, shit. Okay. Wait a minute. Just because you see me with some just because you see me with some Nikes on, don't mean I gotta go out here and buy my child some Nikes. I'm gonna go buy some fucking light ups. Why? Okay. No. Why? Why? Not your if you got Nike, your son should have a new wet light up suit in. Y'all both. No! Because I work I worked hard for mine. He but, can't work, he a child! <laughs> but it's my child. But it's my child. My child. My, my child. My child. Not your, no. So no. you're telling me if you bought yourself some joy, you, you would buy your child some, some, light some light ups? Depends on who she is and what you want from her. Like you if you know you're taking this gift. Is like gonna mean that you got to be committed to her or give something in return, and that's not what you want. So you're better off just not taking it. Me personally, I think it's wrong, but I mean, most people are gonna take whatever they can get. <laughs> I mean, but me personally, I wouldn't do it. A Rolex. <laughs> he like, hey, say no more. I mean. <laughs> if I really felt like she really, really wanted something serious, I'm not. But if she just want to give it, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, why would she just want to give it? That means she wants something serious. Hey, she just got it like that.